Yes. Um, we can cover them. All right, let's dig into it. Um, just like last, you know, in the Pure Bliss breakdown, I bounced an acapella just because having all the vocals in the session made it. I, I, I just wanted to avoid it crashing or glitching on stream because that's the worst. So, all right, let's get started. So the track starts with this little sound bit, these little effects. I swear, I swear I heard it. So here, effect-wise, we have this noise. Just a cymatic sample. Apparently we have some reverb that get, gets automated. I'm assuming that's for the transition. Yeah. Um, and then we have this recording of me I swear, I swear I heard it. <laughs> saying, I swear, I swear I heard it. S stuff like that is just random little things that just pop in my head that like I think might sound cool. Um, and I ended up really liking this when I put it in. We can listen to the rest of it if you guys want. It probably has some really cringy takes of this. I swear to you. <laughs> it, sounds, it, no, it sounds the same every time. <laughs> so I tried a few different things out. Um, I ended up liking that that first bit. Oh shoot, the vacuum is real close now. You guys can probably hear that when I talk. Um, yeah, after that we have this guy. Which I can't remember how I made this, but it was some like, I think I was like designing a delay for the vocal and it had this really cool part in it. And I think it just, I just really like the way it sounded in this intro section. So that kind of helps things move along. Um, and at the same time, you have the like main sample come in that's kind of like a melodic theme in the track um, that sounds like this. And I, ch and I chopped this up. We can actually find the original, the OG. I posted this on my Instagram story one time too. Um, let's see. Movement loop. Imported. So that's the OG sample. Um, and I just pitched it up and, um, and chopped it up. Um, all these effects on it, I think, are just mostly for, like, mixing and stuff. I'm not going to dive, unless you guys have specific questions about, like, how I approach some of the, some of the elements mix-wise. Um, I can definitely do that. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into that just because it would take forever to go through this. But at the end, just let me know and I can, I can address some of that stuff. Um, so that comes in and then right off the bat we have... All, a lot of elements come in. So let's start with the drums. So a lot of the drum sounds in this track are from this sample pack called Wave Racer. And if... You're a friend of mine. I've probably talked about it too much. Um, I think the sample pack is really sick, and at the time I was obsessed with it. And so a lot of these sounds are from this this kit. Um, this kick sounds like this. I think it's my favorite kick from that pack. It's called Big Crunch. Um, and then you have these cool snare sounds. So this is the first one. Nice little sound, and on every... Looks like every four snares or so, it's layered with this. Um, and then on certain hits, you have this clank sound. If I just solo the drums, you'll hear it. And this sounds really crunchy when this... Um, it's basically just like a cashmere orchestra crash clank thing. On its own, it sounds like this. But, you okay, how do I explain this? My friend Asher taught me this really cool technique where, um, without being too confusing, how do I explain this? So, basically, you can take, I, I do this a lot with like open hi-hats or really anything that you want to kind of distort and crunch um, when the kick hits. Now, you can achieve the same thing by just like putting a saturator on your drum bus, for example, but you have a little bit more control this way and you get really cool sound and effect. So let me show you what, what, what this is doing. So you'll notice I have this kick 
sub thing right here. Um, and they're both in the same group. So I called this group crush them. And basically the sub kick and this open hi-hat basically are going to this group. And obviously the sub kick only has like really low sub frequencies. You can see I even did a, a low pass on it. Um, just so we're only sending those low frequencies to it. And then on the bus itself, I have radiator, which is a cool sound. Always plug in that. I really like the saturation you get with this. So basically, since the really low frequency is going into the radiator with the hi-hat or with this clank thing, um, it's going to distort um, because the sub is really loud and low frequencies tend to distort very quickly. Um, and then after the fact, I'm cutting out those low frequencies or that sub. So you basically are just left with this kind of like crunchy hi-hat. So let me just A, B it and you, you can hopefully hear the difference between the two. So you have that. And then if I turn those off, you can hear that sub come through, but let me, let me, um, take out the sub and you can hear, and I'll put it back in. So hear that little like distortion and crunch. Um, it just adds this cool crunchiness um, to the sound and I really, really, really enjoy that. So that's a really, really, really subtle detail. I don't want to spend too much time on that because I know that's mega nerdy. Um, but that's that sound right there. Um, as far as drums go, they're really simple in that part of the verse. And then you have this little drum and bass loop come in. And that was just from a sample pack on Splice I found that I chopped up. It's obviously filtered. I think I flattened this, um, filtered out some frequencies. And then another main element in this verse is this bass. Sounds like this. You're also hearing it, it's side chain to the kick. Um, and I remember <laughs> I got this bass from, let me just show you guys really quick. So hopefully nothing crashes. Also, I'm going to take off this noise gate now because um, it's kind of bugging me. Um, so there's this plugin called Analog Labs or Analog Lab. And this is a little gem, I guess. Maybe it's a gem, maybe it's not, that I found within Analog Lab that you can kind of use to your advantage. So... There's a lot of cool sounds just built in, right, that just come with it. But if you go up here to the top right, it says store, sound store. Um, dang, it would have me sign in. I forgot my login. I'm using my brother's. Um, excuse me. But basically, you see all these late, these banks they have in here, all these sound packs. Basically, they're like preset packs that you can buy through the Arturia store. But you can also, like, demo some of the sounds. So, like, there's, like, seven sounds for example in each pack that you can just like try and it, it won't save so like if you close a session and open it back up it won't remember which you know demo sound you were on um but i would i just found some really cool sounds in here that like are, are just demo sounds and then i just printed them or like freeze and flatten the track before i exited out of it and so i could just use the sounds without buying the pack so if you're poor um this is this is a cool thing um so that's how I got that bass sound is from that pack. Um, and then you have two layers. So there's this one and this one. So th this is the original sound I got from Arturia. But I remember like the low end on it, like the sub was kind of like wobbly and not super consistent and I wanted it to be more consistent. So I grabbed a different sub and I just like did pitch bends to, to, um, like mimic the same characteristics of the other bass with this sub. Right. So if you're on headphones or have good speakers, you'll hear that. Um, and yeah, those are the main things that are happening in the verse besides like obviously the vocals. And there's a lot of effects and like delays and reverbs and things on the vocal that fill the space since there's not a ton going on right there. Um, you also have to split up the verse, this effect sounds like this, 
which I can tell you for a fact that that's just some effects from the Wave Racer, Wave Racer sample pack. Um, you also have this delay here. You can see I cut that out at a certain point, and I'm just using Ableton Stock Echo, which is one of my favorite stock plugins in Ableton. Some MV2, which this is a cheat code for me on delays. I feel like bringing up the low level does something to delays that like makes them more present and cool. Some EQ, um, some reverb from this free version of this Cymatics reverb plugin, and a bunch of effects. Sketch cassette, shout out. Steven, STVN, look up his music. Um, he hooked me up with this. Um, and then just some like filters, more reverb. I like to go crazy on delays is something you'll notice. Um, sick. Um, what am I missing here? You have some other elements come in halfway through this verse. So this vocoder stab that I jacked from my friends, um, Gabe, Isaac, and Sajin. Um, I mixed one of their songs called Home and they had this sick vocoder stab in it that I was obsessed with and so I saved it. I'm sorry guys, hopefully you don't care, but I sampled it and threw it in this song. Um, go listen to their music. Okay, um, there's this other sound that comes in right here. And again, a lot of these sounds are like uh, printed like this one, I don't have the original MIDI for this, but I'm just gonna guess from like the title of the track that I found like a cool sample and threw it in the sampler or simpler and uh, just played these notes with it. So that's technically kind of like a bass layer, but whatever, I have it like in my music group. And then I have this like texture that comes in just as a layer halfway through that. Um, you also have these other vocal effects that are layered. Right. Um, so on this one, we just, I think I pitched these up. No, maybe I did and just flattened it. Um, I just have auto-tune, flanger, some filters, soothe, little altar boy. Oh, that's where the pitch up's coming from. You know, typical, typical moves. Uh, convolution reverb, which I love. That's giving it that sound. And then you have that delay there. Um, there's a lot of effects in this song too, so I'll just go over those quickly. Just have that little one-shot loop, I mean, uh, effect sample. Um, and then you have these transitional, like, tonal effects that kind of carry us into the pre. Oh, this one too, actually. So those just add a little bit of ambience and atmosphere. And um, I find that like, I call those like track beds. And I find that those really help, you know, as, as a producer, those really help certain sections feel um, like complete and like they're in a space and in an atmosphere, especially in this pre, I wanted it to feel like very spacey and ambient. So those worked really well. Um, going into this pre, you have these fills. So you have this one which is just this flanged, I think I, flat, yeah, I, f I freeze and flatten this. Um, but it's just like a drum break that I put like a flanger and probably chorus and a bunch of like modulation effects on. And then you have this fill. Let me, let me mute this. You just hear the fill. So you have this layer. So those layered. Nice. Nice. Um, and then you just have a couple kick layers. Actually, it's just one. I just have a side chain trigger right there. Doing the four on the floor thing. Very simple. Um, and then we have this other bass come in. Oh, I think this is the original analog labs bass. Um, I just didn't like cut out the low end on this one and I just left it kind of how it originally, originally was. So I didn't layer a sub under it on this part. Um, and you have this guitar come in. 
which I probably recorded with my Kemper. And you can hear the filter opening somewhere. That might be printed. Yeah, I probably printed that before. Uh, but that's a really, really nice layer. I love that one. Um, those vocoder stabs again. You have this ARP thing. I feel like this is like tech now. I'll turn it up so you can hear it. Oh, yeah. Woo! I'm in the club, man. You have this layer, just a serum, nice little, nice little layer. I think I modified this preset called Doggos and Froggos because I know that preset doesn't sound like that. It's like this short pluck, so I probably just mess with it. Um, and then let's hear this. You have this cool little 80s like synth fill. Um, again, I think I made that just with like a one shot sample and simpler. And then I automated the reverb maybe, no, it just has reverb on it. Nice. And it cuts out right there. Um, and then you have these two guys. Very buried. You can't really hear those a lot. Um, I already went over the tonal ambience. As far as effects in this pre, you just have impacts another impact typical effects oh cool i forgot about this i think i only did this in the first chorus while i was preparing this project there's actually like a couple of mistakes i made that i didn't realize until now um which is funny but um one of them is that i ended up layering like the instrumental I think I record I played the instrumental through my monitors and I recorded them with a mic and then I layered that or mi I mixed that back in with the mix so it sounds like this cut out some low end put it through some convolution reverb and I felt like it gave like some cool realness to the track in the chorus the mistake I made is that it's only in chorus one so I didn't do this on chorus two or chorus three also, um, before I dig into all the elements of the chorus, one thing I did on the drums is I have this drum bus right here, this drum group, which there's only a couple things that turn on, but it turns on for the chorus. You can see it turn on right here. If I'll just show the automation here. Um, but it doesn't turn on for any of, the, any of the other choruses. So only the first chorus has like this extra drum bus crunch like i have an arouser on there which is basically a distressor if you're familiar with that piece of gear and this eq boosting some low end and it only happens on chorus one i forgot to do it to the other choruses i think um so that was kind of funny um but yeah going into the chorus let me think if there's anything else that leads up to, no i think that's it um so drum wise we have this little fill going into it so Now, I can't remember how I made this. I feel like it like kind of sounds um, like all over samples or something. Um, but it might be just some stuff from the Wave Racer, Rave Racer uh, sample pack because I use so many sounds from that pack in this song. That was like the 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 palette for the song. Um, and let's see. Yeah, you should have that little drum fill. And then you have this kick hit. These two kicks have hit at the same time. This one. And this one, which is the kick with the hat. So that one, really, really nice sample. And I thought it sounded really nice on the one. So basically in this chorus, you technically have like three kicks that play at different times. And then you have that, um, that big crunch kick, the same one from the verse and the rest of the chorus, right? Um, I have this rim sound that... Uh, don't tell anyone, but I ripped from this song. It's the best sample. It's the best rim sample I've ever heard in my life. Oh, I just think it sounds so good. Um, and that's layered with a bunch of percussion loops. So let me just play them together. 
These really give the drums life in the chorus. <laughs> that plugin name is sus. Yeah, it definitely is the arouser. <laughs> Their marketing team is a horny bunch, I must say. Um, so let me just go through the layers real quick. You have the guitar percussion layer. Looks like I pitched this. All right. Oh, I didn't do anything. Usually I use M auto pitch to like lower the format, but I didn't do anything here. There's some filter automation. It's also um, side chain to the to the rim sound or the snare or whatever and um, the kick, I'm assuming. Oh no, the other snare. I think I didn't want these loops like interfering with the snare or the rim sound. You have this little bossa nova groove. Um, you have my percussion loop. That I think I just programmed. I was hearing those triangle hits like when I was making the song, so I made sure to put those in there. And then you have those uh, guitar percussion hits. which I think really add a lot and make it feel very organic. They make the, the drums feel super organic, um, at least in chorus one. And then, let's see. You have those, uh, those clap fills again that happen, several parts in the song. And then you have this fill right here, which again, Wave Racer, shout out. Chop that up. Um, I think I did some like panning moves. Let's see. Oh yeah, I did some panning automation here. Just to kind of make it swirl around your head a bit. Um, let's see if anything else gets added in the second half of the chorus, drum wise. Um, oh yeah, you have these other snares that come in. Let's see. This one. Has some reverb on it too. I think that's where you're getting like that reverb tail when things open up a little bit in the second half of the chorus. Um, and then you have more of these like crushed hats, like that one. Again, a subtle detail, but all this stuff adds up, I feel like. Um, sick. As far as like bass goes, which is another main element of the chorus, um, you have this live bass. I did not play this in. This is my go-to VST, um, which is called Scarby Rickenbacker Palm Muted, DI Palm Mute. Make sure you choose the Palm Muted version. So like if you go down to the Rickenbacker, click on instruments, there's Palm Muted version and then the, there's the normal. For this specific type of sound, the Palm Muted is the way to go. I just prefer the sound of the Palm Muted one in general. But um, Obviously, if I had a if I had a real bass, I, I probably would have just played this in. But I I still don't have one. I still need to buy one. Hopefully, I'll get one soon. Um, so I just printed that. I just freeze and flatten that, and then I I think I chopped some things up here. Sick. And then as far as um sub goes, I layered it with a sub. And I sidechain this sub to the kick. Um, oh, here's the sub I used. I used this, um, this sample, it looks like. Yeah, just this sub bass sample. Then I printed it just so I could chop it up and make sure it was tight. Um, and then halfway through the chorus, I have this other layer. Oh, sick. Uh, okay, so first half of the chorus, it's played up an octave. Second half of the chorus, it goes down like that. And I felt like I needed some more umph on the bass in the second half of the chorus to match the rest of the energy. So I think I um, duplicated it. Oh wait, no, I think they're layered. I think this one's still high. Yeah, and this one's low. have that little fill and then obviously you have the sub bass too down there that's layered with it so that's the bass um, and then halfway through the course you also have these guitars come in
which with the bass sound pretty dope. Um, I'll, I'll solo the drums too. Just recorded these in with my Kemper, just found a cool tone that I liked. They're probably, I don't know if they're, they, they actually sound like the same tone, so I obviously just double tracked them and did slightly different things with them. And then you have this ARP guitar come in. Can't remember if I recorded that or if that's from something else. Um, and then you have these guitar stacks come in. which are a huge theme in the in the song, especially like closing out every chorus. I remember I recorded these in a different project and then I, it was a bunch of tracks, like a bunch of layers of acoustic guitar and I just bounced them down because the session was already huge. Um, I tend to do that a lot. Like when a session gets too big, it kind of overwhelms my brain. So I'll just bounce like the current version of the song and then I'll go in another session. I'll name it like, hear you calling additional production and it helps my brain to like just start from a clean slate and just like add some stuff that I feel like the track is lacking. Um, what the heck? I have a freaking metronome right there. That's th that's not intentional, I don't think. Um, anyways, if you guys want me to open up that project after, I'm totally happy to. Um, so just let me know. Um, and then halfway through the course two, we have these. Apparently they just added some cool things. Have that reverse reverb. These vocal effects. Um, the, the effects is this I Can't Make This Out rack I talked about on my last live stream where I broke down Pure Bliss. Basically just like a bunch of distortion and filtering and weird EQ moves. Um, 100% reverb, short reverb, etc. Um, bunch of effects on there. And then as far as the vocals go, I don't have all the vocals in this session, but um, you can hear that I, there's gang vocals layered. So those add a ton um, to the chorus. Um, and I feel like they make it like uh, very singable, almost like when you when you layer gang vocals like that. I feel like it makes, you know, it's the song at a concert that like the crowd would sing back. You know what I mean? It felt good in this song, so um, and it felt natural, so we did it. Yeah, the metronome perk feel. <laughs> um, sick. I think that's everything in the chorus. At least the first chorus. I know I added some other elements in chorus too. Um, let's see this effect we missed. Oh, it's just a little sub riser. Sick. And then you have the same like fill to close out the chorus. Sick. And then you have um, drums come out except for the snare at the top of verse two. You have some percussion that continues through verse two. So this loop, and then those guitar percussion hits. A lot of the elements are, are the same as verse one. Um, there's a couple different things though. Um, one of them is you have this 808 like sub hit on certain notes, which I thought one of my favorite moments of the song was when that synth hits on right there. Um, Let's find that, this guy. Yeah, that's just an Omnisphere patch, it looks like. So that was a nice moment. Um, you also have this guitar I noticed that continues. The same guitar that was in the first pre-chorus um, is in verse two. Um, and then you have this siren also. Um, I actually had a different sound at the beginning. It was this sound. Which is kind of creepy. I named it Creepy Effects. Um, 
I ended up switching this up because the girl I wrote this song with, her name is Megan Redmond. Um, I sent her like one of the final or one of the mixes when it was close to being done. And she was like, that was one of the few comments she had was, I don't know if I love that noise at the beginning of verse two. So I tried a different noise. I ended up liking this a lot. It's just a siren. Right. So, um, thanks Megan. That was a great suggestion. Um, and then this hits on the downbeat of verse two as well. Just this little effect. I went. I already went over this ambience. This is some of the same ambience that was in the pre-chorus. Um, and then right here, I love the sound. Again, I'm pretty sure I just made this using like a one-shot sample. Um, it's the same patch as um, that in the in the first pre-chorus. Um, let's see what happens here. Something changes with the sample right there. What am I hearing? I, see a shadow in my head. I think it's a guitar. Where is that? Guys, am I going crazy? Oh, this. This is what I was looking for. So originally this sounded like... this again I probably just resampled like all the instruments um like my music bus I probably just resampled it pitched it up and filtered it and made it really narrow with the width knob here you have this little twinkly effects that's from the wave racer pack as well hey this guy I think that's in, in the first verse as well. Um, and then we have some more elements coming here. So one of the most prominent elements is definitely this, that yeah sound, which is just a little ad lib I recorded. Um, you have some more additional vocals coming right there too. And then you have this guy, which I'm pretty sure I recorded and distorted and put reverb on and stuff. Cool stuff like that. Um, so you have these guitars. That's a typical AT riff. Well, I'm not saying that I made that up, but that's like a typical riff that I would play because I don't know how to play many things on the guitar. That acoustic guitar comes in on the left. And then obviously, layered and it looks like I put the infamous CLA vocals on this guitar <laughs> uh, apparently it made it sound better um, anything new have a shaker come in some more drum stuff um, you have that OG drum and bass loop but then you also have this one And then this, which is nice. And that with this clap. Yeah, this clap's unique to verse two. And then obviously all those other things. Um, So this second pre is very similar to the first. It just doesn't have the kick, you know, the floor and the floor kick. And also, I think the chord progression changes, or maybe not. Maybe I'm lying. Let's listen. No, I think it's the same. Um, this little synth guy is new for the second pre. Mm. 
Um, just add some cool synthiness. I don't know what to call it to that one. Oh, and then I have this track called Resampled Melody. Chop that up right there, which that is not unlike me to do that. Um, I think in like every one of my most recent projects, I do that. So I'll just take like all the music and resample it and pitch it up and down and filter it and stuff. It's a cool way to like make a section feel fresh while still like doing the same chords and still having the same production elements technically. Um, you're just kind of like messing up the sound. Um, you have these tonal elements, which I already went over. Um, and then this. Sick. Um, and then you have this time the loop continues. Right? And those those snares keep going. So it kind of makes the intro like um, or the transition into the chorus feel different than the first chorus, which I thought was important. Just like being a pop song and stuff, you know. Um, sick. So drum wise, second chorus, it's pretty similar to the first. I think the main difference is that we have these shakers. So if I take them out, right? That sounds like chorus one. That sounds like chorus two. Um, and the bass is pretty much exactly the same. No differences there. We have that same guitar. Let's see if anything else is different right off the bat. There's probably some differences in the vocal for sure. Um, oh, you have these effects. Oh. Don't remember how I made that. I had so many effects tracks in this song that I ended up like combining a bunch and bouncing them down. That's why it's called like effects three. And it has like a bunch of different things in it. Um, yeah, again, don't, don't remember how I made that, but also those gang vocals, um, come in right off the bat. Never mind. Never mind. They do that on, on chorus one, too. Come on, Adam. You know better than that. Um, halfway through the chorus. Yeah, I think it's very similar besides um, besides those shakers. I feel like that's like the main difference between the choruses, unless I'm missing something. Um, and then you have the bridge, which is like my favorite part of the song. I love it. I just I just think it's like good vibes, right? So let's go through the stuff. Drums are basically the same. Um, you just have this all over loop come in using LFO tool to, I think, just tighten it up. Uh, it's tightening it up a little bit. It's making the sustain a little less. Um, obviously, the bass line changes here. Baseline changes, and then you have this bridge guitar. One's an octave lower, one's an octave higher, and then you have this wavy guitar. Ooh, I love that guitar. Um, let's see, I have guitar rig on it. Oh, it's just the effects, though, I think. So how th that's how it sounded coming in through my Kemper. And then we have slow motion movie, this preset. Which gives it all the waviness that we need. Um, you have these beeps. Sick, sick. Then you have these vocal chops. Okay, so the main, the main like, 
I guess, melodies as far as like the, these vocal chop things or vocal samples go. If you have this one, which is nice. I think it sounds exactly the same without the effects. Yeah. That's just giving it some ambience. And then you have these, which are from my friend Heather Somer sample pack. Um, I just found a part of this vocal sample that I liked that fit. Um, and then this track here is just like giving this bounciness to the chorus. <laughs> it sounds dumb on its own, but if you layer it like with the bass and the drums, let me show you. I think it's tight. Um, man, I'm so in my bag right now, guys. I'm so I'm deep in my bag. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, and then you have this little. This is literally from my song Care. I just took part of the a acapella when I go. If you know my song Care. That's just part of the acapella that I messed with. So all those things work together to make the bridge kind of have a different vibe um, than the rest of the song. Then you just have these sweeps come in. And this effect. That's just a little reverb layer that goes with the vocal. Yeah, why is the chat just a bunch of musical beasts? <laughs> I agree. Oh, shoot. I just zoomed in so much. Um, and then... I remember I recorded these vocals and I was like kind of like nasally and sick and I thought about re-recording them and then I just didn't. Laziness. And I was working, I was trying to finish like the last four or five songs on the album when I finished this and so I, I think I was just a little overwhelmed and was like, no, we're just going to roll with it. Um, you have these effects hit on the soft chorus. Impact. A little sub drop. You have this nice little pluck that I was obsessed with. Really nice omnisphere. Then you have that layered with this. Very, very nice. And then this weird ride sound. Also, um, I'm pretty sure Megan had the idea to do this too, where we layered like the chorus gang vocals on it. So. Which I thought was such a good idea. Yeah, this little whoosh effect that goes into the snare. I guess it's kind of a. <laughs> little downlifter. Classic. Um, this tonal hit, I think this is the only time this happens. And then I think one of the main differences with this chorus, besides the vocals changing, and you have this like ad lib that sings a different melody than than usual, I think, which makes this chorus sound bigger than the rest. You also have these guitars. Um, oh, I actually think these are the guitars I was talking about from the other session. I must have just like bounced out part of it for that one fill or something. Um, but let me just go through the layers quickly. So we have this guy. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll turn it up. 
So there's that. Most of these are recorded through my Kemper. I've said that like 400 times on the stream. But I record most of my guitars through my guitar box called a Kemper. So you have these two layers, I think, which make it really cool. This would not sound nearly as cool if all these guitars were playing the exact same thing with the same voices. So that's an important thing to take away, I think. And then um, these acoustics. So these two are just playing like the chords and then this guy is doing And then as far as processing on these acoustics, you have the Pultec, of course, boosting all the way at 12K. We're doing some attenuation at 10K here, um, just helping them be really bright. Um, and then on this uh, uh, electric guitar group, we have two instances of this for some reason. Doing some boosts, boosts, some compression. And then this one's boosting different frequencies. Who knows why I did that? Because I'm doing more EQ here. Let's hear how it sounds without it. Okay, well, might be too many plugins, but it, it definitely cleans it up a bit. Um, uh, this last hook guitar goes through the chorus. Anything else different? Let's see, probably the drums. See if there's any other layers. Oh, you have that little ride thing layered. Where is that? Where are you? Oh, this one. That's a new layer. Also, this snare, the reverb snare. Um. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait, no, yeah. It does hit right off the bat in this chorus instead of coming in halfway through. Um, and you have this string, which is only in the last chorus as well. This track that's just like all the way wet reverb layered on the vocals. This is not doing anything. Let's see. Oh, uh, it's just a delay throw on Colin. Yeah, guys, that's the that's the song. Oh, at the end there, you have um, you have everything filter out. Looks like so you have like some le some some effects that ring out, and I just filtered them down there at the end, and I think I automated reverb somewhere. All oh, right, here, just to make the outro nice and smooth. Um, so yeah, as far as like all the elements go, that's the track. Um. Thanks for being patient with me because like, as you can see, this session is pretty big and it's hard to, to remember like exactly where I am and to find all the things and make sure I don't miss anything. Um, start sending in questions if you guys have any. Um, and while you're sending in questions, if, if there's anything I missed, I'll just go over like some of the processing on um, this beat bus, I call it, and the mix bus. So on the beat, which is just the instrumental, this is like, if I solo this bus, it's just the instrumental for the song. I have multiband compression and Ableton plugin. If I take this off, let me AB it. Usually you can especially hear like the kick is tightened up a lot with the multiband compression. Um, 
uh, some people say that this is a bad idea to like mix into multiband compressors or to like have them on from the start. But I have yet to be convinced of that or understand why. Um, just because a lot of times when I add, especially the Ableton multiband compressor, it just makes things sound better. So like, why not? Why not use it? Um, and then on the master here, I didn't master the song, but this is like my mis mix bus. Um, so I kept all these plugins on when I, when I sent them to mastering. You have the BX Digital, which you can see I'm just cutting out certain frequencies. Um, so some 2.7, some 12K, some 4K. Um, on the mono section and on the stereo section, we have some other stuff happening. Bumping up the stereo width a little bit. Um, you have Saturn, which is bypassed, so I didn't really do anything on that there. Um, this plugin call, this is basically a limiter, but it has an EQ section too. So I'm boosting some lows there and some highs at like 12K. Um, this is another EQ. I'm doing a cut at 28K. All this stuff is pretty subtle though. Um, very subtle. Um, except for the inflator, this thing, this thing makes things louder and like more full. I don't know what it does. I mentioned this in my last stream. Um, but I put this on my mix bus a lot as well. Um, lately I've been putting it on like really early in the mixing process. Um, but I'd do it later too. Oh, I didn't use the CQ, I guess. And then I have a vintage compressor that I don't know if it's doing much. Let's see. Barely anything, like 1 dB at most. Fletcher Munson, Munson curve. This is basically an EQ curve that like makes things less harsh to the human ear, and it's barely, barely doing anything. But um, especially when you're making moves on your mix bus, I think it's best to to be on the more subtle side than on the aggressive side, just because you can really mess up your mix quickly on the mix bus if you if you push things too far. Um, Let's see if there's any other questions. Yo, Adam, I'm... Oh, and for the people re-watching this on YouTube, um, hopefully that was helpful, and hopefully you can skip through the video and find the things that you wanted to see me talk about. Um, yo, Adam, just beginning doing proper digital music. What do you suggest for stuff like writer's block and for singing? Um, if you're just starting out, I would just suggest making a lot of music and being okay with it not being very good at first um try to finish songs um even if you're not going to release them figure out which ones which ideas are worth finishing and finish them um and i think that'll help you get better really fast um if you're just starting out try to avoid spending hours and hours and hours and days and months on one song um uh, just because frankly, unless you're like a prodigy, it's probably not going to be good anyway. <laughs> and so I find that like working through a lot of different ideas and, and learning how to finish them and close the curtain on them um, and create new songs will help you kind of advance really quickly. So that would be like my one piece of advice. Um, let's see. Your production is a big inspo. Keep it up. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Let's see what else we got here. You're my favorite artist since I found your music around six months ago. I haven't been able to go a day without listening to it. It helps me get through my day. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. Um, do you strum hard when you record acoustic guitar? How quantized are they? Um, on a song like this, very either I obsessed about playing them in perfectly as far as like rhythm goes, or a lot of times I end up like chopping them up. Um, one thing to watch out for with like something like acoustic guitars that are strummed um, is if you try to like quantize them in Ableton with the warp markers, I find that there's a lot of artifacts. So I end up like turning, um, if you look at my screen right now, I turn create fades on clip edges on so that it automatically creates crossfades to make the editing process really fast. And I'll go through and cut up um, the audio file and like nudge stuff around to get it in in basically basically manually quantize it because I find that it's like more transparent that way. But if you don't care about transparency and you don't mind the artifacts, then just use the warp markers. But that's something that's helped me with acoustic guitars. Um, what's that limiter from Waves? What, what limiter? 
the M are you talking about the MV2 thing? Um, dude, I love the fill going into chorus two. Can you go over that? Yeah. Let's see. Sick. So let's see. You have these snares. Um, basically you have the snares continue and then you have this guy, which I don't remember, like I said earlier, I don't remember the source of the sound, but it's, I think it's just two different samples. Um, and then you have this loop that continues, guitar percussion loop, and then down here you have Oh, it looks like it's just like a tom fill. So this layer and this layer. So drum wise, let me solo those drums. Does that make sense? Pretty sure that's all there is to it. Um, along with this effect. Remember though. Uh, whoa. Whatever, whatever that is. Um, the one on the master bus, limiter from waves. Alex, I think you're thinking of this. If you're thinking of this, this isn't a waves plugin. It's made by uh, Nomad Factory, I think is the company. Um, I got this, well, I got put onto this by a mixer named Jason Joshua who uses this, so I thought I'd try it. I honestly don't use the limiting function of a lot. I mostly use this for the EQ. Um, and I kind of control like how hot my low end is and how hot my high end is on my whole mix um, from this plugin. So I'll even like be listening to the vocal um, and I'll, I'll figure out how bright I want my vocal to be and I'll, I'll sometimes, sometimes I'll adjust it on, on the master here and just you know fine tune like overall brightness um, and like my low end, um, I think it's just easy to fine tune it on the, on the mix bus. Um, good pack for Tom samples. Depends what you're looking for. But a cheat code, I don't know if this is a cheat code, but um, if you're looking for like drum machine sounds, like 808 Toms and like MPC Toms and stuff like that, um, which I really, really love to use, um, check out samples from Mars. Like just Google that and they have some free packs. Um, I think they're free. I think I got these free. So for example, they have these like an 808 pack. So let me just show you. I'll pull this up. Might take a second to load. Um, but basically they recorded in a bunch of these sounds from like an actual 808 machine and they're really, really clean, well-recorded sounds. And they pre-made like Ableton drum racks. Um, they, as you can see, they also have these for like Logic and Machine and a bunch of different stuff. But like if I drag in Clean Kit, hopefully this doesn't crash. Please, 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 please. If it does crash, oh, it looks like it's not going to. If it does crash, the stream is just over because this project will take forever to load back up. Okay, so it has a drum rack, right? And let me see. Can you guys hear that? Let me just turn up the volume of the whole track. Let's see. has a bunch of really, really dope drum samples. And there's a lot of different kits that like sound a little bit different. So like this one's called Tom and Colors and there's a distorted kit. Um, and then if you're looking for like more MPC type sounds, they have those and they also have some synths. Um, so that's been a really, really cool resource for like Toms and stuff. Otherwise I'll go through like just splice and I'll just like go, I've collected certain Tom samples over time. I think the key is like being organized um, so, for example, when I organize my samples um, or when I download new samples, I try to organize them. So if I go to drums, toms, I have like 80s toms, acoustic toms, synthetic toms. And within these folders, I have a bunch of 
um, and then create like a cool tom fill. So there's not necessarily like one pack I would suggest, but um, taking time to find really good sounds that you like, I think is key. Do I use machine? Um, yes and no. Yes and no. It depends on the song, but I actually really, really like machine. I was telling my friend the other day um, something about like when I put drums in the machine, something about like either the way that I program drums, like the way that I approach it mentally or like, I don't know what it is about it, but I feel like they sound, my drums sound really cool when I use machine. Um, I'm trying to think of a song. I don't know if I've put out a song that I used drums and machine, but like I'm finishing up a song right now that the drums were completely programmed in machine. And I don't know. I think it can be cool. I really like all the like built in effects it has in there. And I think it's, um, it's definitely like more, more you can do with it in my opinion than you can in like the Ableton drum rack, but it's just, it's nice obviously to have something that loads quickly like Ableton drum rack. And that's like so integrated with Ableton, but yeah, I think it's sick. Um, when am I coming out with a sample pack? Great question. Uh, I've been thinking about doing one. I just need to find <laughs> like ways I could do it that would actually be really valuable and unique. You know what I mean? Because there's like a million, you know, sample packs out there that have awesome like kicks and snares and whatever. So I just need to find like what would be a cool, um, you know, way to approach it that could be really useful to people. Because like my favorite sample packs are sample packs that are like very utility based I guess like for example the Oliver sample packs I think they're so popular because they're so useful for like pretty much anything that you're working on like the loops in there like the percussion loops the hi-hat loops um especially like I feel like they can add so much feel and vibe to a track just by dropping them in um and they can inspire so much so if I make a sample pack ever I think that'll kind of be the goal um is to do something that's as useful as like a pack like that. Um, but I'll probably put something out. Like if I don't like do a splice kit or whatever, I'll probably release some samples at some point, just like that I've collected from some of my songs and stuff. Um, some of the built in stuff in there is cool. Yeah, it, it really is. It's super dope. Um, would buy an Adam sample pack so fast. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, let me see if I missed any questions anywhere in the chat. Um, oh, looks like people already answered questions for me. My crew. Yeah, I just use mostly the stock Ableton convolution reverb. Um, yeah, and for the rim that I ripped from that song, I've actually been listening to songs when I listen to music, just in general. I'm I started like listening for places where like the snare plays alone, just so I can sample snares. <laughs> Hopefully, people don't. I mean, I should probably clear that stuff, but I know I personally would be honored if I made a sound and someone used it. Um, let's see. How do you make your drums tight and pocket? Any tips on that? Uh, when we're talking tight, uh, a couple things come to mind. I mean, sample choice is always going to be just king, right? You just have to choose tight, choose tight samples if you want tight drums, you know? Like, I didn't do any crazy amount of processing to these drums to make them feel tight. It's just the samples I chose. Like this guy... How can you get more tight than that, you know? Um, I also probably did, like, one way to, like, tighten up a loop in Ableton, and most of you guys probably already know this, so I'll go over it quickly so I don't bore you. But if you have, like, a percussion loop like this, you can tighten it up in Ableton at least um, by changing it to beats mode, make it go to the forward arrow, and bring down this, this knob. Makes things really tight. It's basically like a transient designer. So it's just like keeping the attack and cutting out all the sustain of a sound. Um, but more than anything, I would just focus on your sample choice and use things like transient designers to make things less sustain and more just punchy and tight. And that's going to help 
your drums feel tight. Um, yo, can you go through the fill before the second pre? Yeah, let me find that. Yeah, I think it's very similar to the first one. Um, you have this fill right here. Which is exactly the same as the first pre. If you look over here, it's just the exact same thing. Um, I think what makes it feel a little bit different is that, again, the guitar percussion just continues. And these snares also keep going. Um, but other than that, it's the it's the exact same fill as as the last one. Um, but yeah, guys, that's the song. That's the song. By the way, fun fact: the song originally sounded completely different. It was just written on the guitar. And there was no production to it, and the verse was completely different. Um, the pre was too. Um, and when I was making this song actually started, I was actually starting it as a different song. Um, I didn't know this was going to be Hear You Calling. I already had the song written, Hear You Calling. And then I was just making this beat. Um, basically, I had this chorus. Or sorry, this chorus. Right? I had this, and I was trying to write a different melody over it, and I was getting really frustrated because I didn't land on anything that I liked. And then I remember, like, at some point it popped in my head that I just sang the chorus of Hear You Calling that I had written previously with my friend Megan, and it worked. Um, but I had already created this, like, verse vibe. Um, well, you guys know how the verse goes, but this whole vibe. And the verse that we had originally written for the song didn't really work over, over, over this production, and I really, really loved the feel of this whole thing. So I ended up just writing a new verse under under it. Um, and then we had a different pre. I rewrote a pre um, and then ended up not liking that. So I think this is the third pre that we that we wrote. Um, that was the first one that like felt like, oh, yeah, this is it. Um, so just a fun fact. Um, what's your favorite part of production? Drums, Vox? Um... Great question, man. Great question. Uh, I I would say definitely more so drums than vocals. I do love vocals so much. Like obviously the vocal is gonna be the most important thing, and I love when a vocal feels great. But uh, it's just a lot more in my experience, like tedious work to get there. So a lot of editing, a lot of time aligning. You know, um, the mixing is a whole another beast and something that always frustrates me and and um where i've spent a lot of time like trying to get you know to sound the way that i want um drums are just more fun to me so i would say programming like and making drums um and bass i think like the rhythm section is so fun to me um just because they're like the backbone of the song and just so fundamental to how a song feels um that those are probably my favorite things to work on. Um, but yeah, guys, I think that's all the questions that I see in the chat. So unless there's something else that pops up in the next 20 seconds or so, I think we're done. Um, but I really appreciate you guys hanging out for the, like the 10 or 12 of you that have been live with me. Thank you guys. Love you guys so much. Um, and let me know if there's any other songs you would want me to break down in the future. It'll probably be a minute till I do. Um, but I wanted to break down a few songs from Color, or at least a couple, before my new song comes out. And if you haven't gone and pre-saved my new song, it comes out on Friday. It's called I Want to Live in a World. I Want to Live Inside a World where I never met you, which is extremely depressing. And the song is also pretty depressing, but it's good. I think, I hope you guys will like it. And if you wouldn't mind pre-saving it, if you haven't done that yet, um, obviously a lot of you guys are artists that are listening. So you know how much that can help. So just hit the link in my bio on my Instagram and pre-save it. Also put it in the, in the description of this YouTube video for those 
that are watching this after the fact. But thank you guys. Love you. And peace out.